And we're back here at Gen Con with a new friend from USAopoly. Yes. All right, Pat. And we have a lot of games to go through. Yes, How we do. exciting. So, what do we have here? I see the Samurai Jacks, and I am admiring these miniatures. Yeah, so this is our uh, Samurai Jack Back to the Past board game uh, based on the most recent fifth season that came out uh, of Samurai Jack. Okay. Um, and this game is part of our Project Raygun imprint brand mm -hmm. uh, within USAopoly where we do... Um, so what is Raygun Games? Yeah, so Raygun is, a, is an imprint brand we created to kind of... Um, create a space for these more hobby uh, style gameplay experiences okay. um, and uh, to work with some licenses that may not be as large as some of the other right. licenses like Marvel and mm -hmm. Harry Potter that we work with. Uh, so we felt like artistically, uh, style-wise, like Samurai Jack was really a good fit yeah. for, for that branding. Okay. So tell me the basic stuff. How many people can play? What kind of game is it? Ages? Length of session? Yeah, so this is a, a two to five player game. Uh, depending on the group of players, uh, times fluctuate a little bit. And see what we have on the box, actually, because we, we go through this one pretty fast. It says 45 minutes. Uh, okay. Once you get to just 30 sometimes to, to get through it. Um, it is a competitive game with some cooperative elements okay. in it. Um, and uh, and age-wise, um, I'm going to say we say 14 and up, 13 and up. Um, but we've certainly seen some younger sure. players who are fans uh, jump in and play as well. Okay. Yeah. So do we have enough time to maybe run through a turn? Yeah, so we can we or can do a, a turn or two. So okay. um, I'll go ahead and give you Ashi as your character there. Okay. Daughter um, of Aku. Yes, and you're going to need the Ashi cards, which we'll pull off the bottom here. And we'll, we'll pretend we have a game in progress here. All right. And the way this is going to work is... Um, we're all going to secretly program uh, all players our movement. So okay. uh, I'll play as Rothschild, another one of uh, Jack's allies, and we'll take uh, some of these other folks off. And all of these painted miniatures come in the game uh, pre-painted like this. They're which is, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to work with the art for a license like this um, and certainly to be able to do full color minis. Mm. Um, so. What each player is going to do on their turn is uh, program a movement to one of these colored spaces on uh -huh. the path. And what is the strategy behind that? Okay, so what you want to do is um, ultimately collect these cards. So at the end of our path, which we've shortened a little bit for table yeah. space here, um, is to battle the particular villain for this segment of the story. Oh. Uh, we'll go through several rounds with new villains, and ultimately we'll have to fight Aku. Mm -hmm. In order to fight these villains, you need sets of cards, which right. you can see there's you know, uh, paw prints, mm -hmm. there are uh, axes, and there are leaves. And so here on the board, we have those cards with the symbols laid out, and they're on colors that coordinate to the tiles. Okay. So if you end your movement on uh, colored space, okay. you're able to draw a tile uh, or a card from that space. Right. So movement is always from back to front and cards from front to back. So the player who's furthest back will move first, okay. and then the player who is uh, furthest forward will select their card first. Okay. Um, and if you reach the end of the path and you have one of these sets, you can place your figure on the corresponding space and score the points. Okay. Um, the other piece you want to be aware of is Jack is out here moving around. Mm -hmm. now, none of us get to play as Jack. Oh, man. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but we all want to help Jack out on his quest yeah. and keep him sane. And so um, if, if you're familiar with the story, you know Jack struggles a little bit with his sanity in yeah. this season um, and, and keeping balance with everything that's going on. And so Jack will move first. Okay. And so we reveal one of these movement cards, and we'll see Jack is going to move to the city. So. Yeah, I saw a reveal and resolve a movement card for Jack. So yeah. that's what you're doing. So if none of us move to the orange space to be with okay. Jack, his sanity token is going to move up one on his path. All right. If his sanity token reaches the end, mm -hmm. uh, we will all lose the game. Okay, so it, it's actually sanity decreasing. Yes, mm. as, as he moves closer and closer, you can kind of see the, the iconography oh, here. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, at eight, it's like, ah! Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, but if Actually, that is pretty, he's yeah, like shirtless and is right. like having no moment. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, so if you move with Jack though, you can get a card and you'll get an honor point. Um, oh, so we have honor point okay. tokens that come with the game to help you track points. So helping out Jack is okay. also a good thing to do. However, after we've all moved, mm -hmm. Aku will draw one of these cards and move as well. Oh no. And if Aku moves to your space, you don't get to draw a card. Oh, that sucks. Right, so you're trying to kind of predict how far he might go. Okay. 
The other piece of the strategy. What is the range? Uh, like, is there a max that we know Aku can move? So he's going to reveal one of these colors. Okay. So he can move up to the farthest oh, um, purple space there. So if he drew a green, he would move mm -hmm. here rather than to the far green. So. And I know you said you shortened this path for space. Does this go like twice as long, or um, do you so start circling is, around? This is two thirds. Okay. Um, and one of the things that's nice, so there's 15 of these tiles. Uh, you lay them out randomly. Okay. Um, but so that you, the first five is each of the colors. The I second understand. five is each of the colors. And so they have um, sets of backs. So there's okay. five, Ooh. five of this back. So mm -hmm. it's easy to make the path. Um, and depending on how big your table is, you can snake it around. You can ah, have it go back and forth. Sure. Or um, downstairs, we have a, a long demo table, so we have cool. this nice snaking path nice. down the middle. Um, and, and so one of the other things you have to pay attention to as well is, so my character is Rothschild, and, and if I were to play my red card uh, and then reveal it, I'm going to move to the red space. Okay. Um, and so we see what's nice is red is also my player color. Mm -hmm. So every time I move to red, I'm able to pick up all of my movement cards. Oh, okay. But if I move to blue, I can't move to blue again until I pick those cards up. Okay. So then I might move to purple, and then an orange space, and then I'm getting low on cards, low right. on choices. I'll play my red so that at the end of that turn, I okay. can regain my movement. So there's some, some decisions to be made about the path you take. The other aspect is the faster you move, uh -huh. the easier it is to claim the high point space on the scoring track. Right, okay. But the less cards you'll collect right, along Right, because you need to collect these resources so that you can do, there's no point in ending up here and not having any resources to battle Aku, right? Absolutely. Um, but if you get to the end and you can't make one of those sets, the good news is you get to keep your cards for okay. the next battle with another oh, villain. Okay. Um, and you'll also see some of these cards have our character symbols on them. So, for example, this uh, card has the paw symbol. It also has um, Sir Rothschild's face on it. Mm -hmm. And if I collect that card and use it to make a combo, I get extra points. Ah. So that might steer me to say, oh, I really want to go to the purple space mm -hmm. or, or again over here on the green. So it's some interesting okay. decisions to be made there. Uh, so, yeah, I think we actually do have time to do a turn. Why don't you go right. first and show me how it's done? Okay, so we're each going to select one of the cards from our hand at the same time. Okay. Um, so I will go ahead and do this card. Okay. And then uh, you'll pick the color space you want to move to. And then I am trying to collect, like how do I know what resource I'm trying to go for? Like sure, so if, if when you reach the end of the path you have a puppy paw symbol uh, to represent Jack's uh, pet wolf who's mm -hmm. in this uh, particular part of the story, or an axe which represents the weapons, right. um, you'd be able to get three points. Okay. So the safe bet of course is to just get the small set for so the small points, but what you likely want to do is try to get like two middle. leaves in an axe. Or, or we could shoot high. Yeah. Okay. All right, well maybe it seems like I always need an axe, and so those are on the orange and green. Yeah, and so the, the shuffle was not so good here, so our symbols are pretty okay. uh, mixed here, uh, or pretty linear. I... Yeah. So you'll pick your card, okay. and, and all players, so if you have five players, everybody plays face down, and then okay. you reveal the cards. All right, I also put city. Okay, so... And I want to help out Jack, I don't want him to go crazy. Right, so <laughs> I would move here behind Jack because I was the furthest back player. Okay. And then Ashi would follow and join Jack on that space. Okay. And then we flip a card for Aku. Oh no, stay away. And so Aku is going to move to the green space, so we are <sighs> Thank safe. Thank goodness. Um, we were actually fairly safe because all the spaces were covered, so if he drew orange, he oh. would still fall in line okay. behind us. Um, and so... Oh yeah, I just noticed the... So you have three slots for each hex tile. Yeah. Alright, cool. So if, if we were playing with five players and someone else had tried to move to orange, they would be pushed back to oh, the green space okay. with Aku. Cool. Um, and so now <laughs> don't want that. Absolutely. So you know. So now we resolve, and, mm -hmm. and as I said, this is front to back. And so um, what we get to do here is because we're on the orange space and Jack's on the orange space, we don't have to move his sanity uh, okay. token, um, and we would each get an honor point All token. Right. And then uh, starting with my character, who's a little further ahead, mm -hmm. I get to choose a card from the orange space. Okay. And even though they have the same symbol, I see the different symbols have different colors. What does that mean? And, and is gray neutral? Yep. So the grays are, are the neutrals. Mm -hmm. um, and then the colors represent the character color. So the red uh, is mine. So if there was a red one here, I would want to take like, that. Kind of like this one right here. Yeah, for the All extra right. points. But since these three are the same, mm -hmm. um, it really just becomes which one's art do I like the most. And, and I'll take Jack's hat because 
it's Jack's hat, why not? Um, and so I would put this into my hand and have this uh, okay. resource to be able to use towards fighting one of the villains. And then uh, as the next player back on the path, you would be able to choose also a Oh, okay. Card. So we got the, the Bumpy Club, the ca Canabo, or this <laughs> creature leg. I think I want that because that just looks fun. And so now the other interesting thing is these cards are not going to refresh. Okay. So the number of cards so on the spaces is based on... So we could waste away one of the tiles. Right. And so, or category, colors. Yeah, if we had had mm -hmm. a third player in the game and they'd also gone to the space, they sure. would have taken the last card there. But the number of cards on each space is based on the player count. Right. So um, with fewer players, you have And it would probably cards. be like basically no reason to go to the next city because there's nothing there. Right. Okay. And the good news is that we've used our city cards. Neither right. of us is orange, so, so we can't... Pick we those couldn't back anyways. Up. And so then uh, we'll basically repeat the process and we'll flip a new card for Jack. Jack, and don't stray so far. He's going to run all the way Why up to the ruins. Why would you do that? Yeah. And <laughs> so now we have that tough choice of sure. do we skip all that space and all these card opportunities? No, to we have don't. Jack. Jack, you did that to yourself, dude. Right. I can't bail you out. Um, and so I'm going to look down here. I've got an X. What else would I want to collect this round? We're both going to kind of make that decision. Um, and now typically, if, if I had shuffled better, we would have some leaves out here so you can see those cards. Um, and then there are a few really desirable... Maybe they were already collected. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and then, of course, the, the ever-enticing dual cards. Oh, you know, so, so it could be either or yeah. what you need. That yeah. is very enticing. Um, so those would be distributed around. Um, but seeing that there's no opportunity to get leaves, and we need a lot of leaves, I'm just gonna go for the safe bet and try to move somewhere where I can get a paw okay. uh, to use. So I'm gonna choose my card, and then Oh yeah, I this. was oh, also supposed to choose a card. All right. Um, hmm. I think we may have chosen the same Possible. thing. Yep. <laughs> and we so need those paw paws. So you're gonna... Go you know, first to purple for Because I was behind. Yep, All and right. then I'll follow suit. Um, and so in this case now, let's see, hopefully Aku doesn't come join no. us. He does not, okay. he stays just a step behind us in the desert. My goodness. And as the player furthest forward, you get the first choice of the purple And, and then when do we slide up his poor degrading uh, so, mental state? So we, we do that now because not, none of us moved with right. him. And well, we kind of screwed him over. Well, he, he went so far ahead. I need stuff. All right, so I can choose from any of these three, mm -hmm. but I see this has my character's symbol on it. That's yeah. some kind of combo, right? So here, daughter of Ku, there's the giant bird. And then what does that mean in the later game? So if you use that card to sure. complete one of the sets, you get extra okay. points. Um, so basically by having more of the items and allies and, and different cards that are connected to your character, okay. you become more powerful at fighting the villains and you get some extra honor points for, for those matches. And of course, I'm gonna do the same uh, thing here and get the card that matches my character here. Um, and you can see we both completed the, the first opportunity to fight the villain. So uh, we would basically at this point, if, if we both think we're just gonna take the safe bet and get three points, yeah. start collecting. So you can accelerate once you're ready. Yeah, and if- So I don't have to necessarily keep collecting more resources. Yeah, if okay. you do, you'll have them for the next villain, uh, which will be helpful for okay. a future round. But let's say Monkey Man was in the game too, we had a third player, okay. and he was doing the same thing. Right. We might wanna race ahead and fill in these spaces before him. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you can see here these grade spaces are only available if there are uh, four players and five players. Okay, to so, balance out. Yeah, and exactly. so with two of us playing, the first one who gets here is going to get this set, and the second of us to get there mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to score any points this round. So another option is to slowly go along and help Jack and pick up individual honor points along the way okay. if you feel like you're going to be blocked. So there's a lot of back and forth yeah, decision well, making more about... More aggressive, more, you know, all right. Yeah more conservative. Um, I have always been a huge fan of the art style of Samurai Jack. Um, where did the art for the game come from? Was this specifically created for this board game? Uh, no, the art is provided by the, the style guide mm -hmm. from, um, from Cartoon Network and from the Samurai Jack team. 
So what we've done is... So you is, had to sort through everything. Yeah, and... and um, so these aren't just made-up weapons. These are weapons that show up in the show. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everything you see here are characters that Jack encounters in the show. They're weapons he uses and that the other characters use. Uh, they're villains that he encounters throughout. So, um, so fans will be able to pick up those references yeah. and see the different elements brought to, to light in this Like game. this nubby club. <laughs> yes. Um, so what was, like... Did you guys have to actually approach Cartoon Network, or were they looking for somebody to partner with to create this game? Uh, we've had a pretty solid relationship with Cartoon oh, Network cool. for a number of games. Uh, Adventure Time Munchkin, for mm -hmm. example. Um, you know, different properties they've had over the years. We did uh, Steven Universe uh, Monopoly. Yeah. Um, and so through those partnerships, uh, we have a, a pretty good line of communication. So as ideas come up for licenses we might like to work with, um, our licensing person will contact cool. their team and say, you know, could, can we play with this, this property? Can we use the story? Um, we usually pitch them a, a basic idea, and if they're on board, we'll develop sure. it and hone it into a final concept. Oh, Pat, I forgot to ask you, what are you? Uh, what's your role over at USAopoly? Uh, I'm part of the content development team, so oh, I design cool. game play. Nice. Um, Did yeah. you work on this one? Uh, in the, the play testing of mm -hmm. it, uh, Andrew Wolf actually designed the core gameplay cool. mechanic here, and then uh, Pam uh, Warwick from our graphics team cool. did all the layout and everything mm -hmm. for this. Yeah. yeah, it's really neat, and I think it invokes a lot. So, a uh, real quick question. There are different characters that have different characteristics from the show, different mm -hmm. personality types, th different things are going on with them, clearly. Um, how did you take uh, kind of like the show and how did that inform kind of the different characteristics on their cards and turn those into mechanics and gameplay? Yeah, so in this one, the, the characters will play very similarly mm -hmm. to one another. Uh, because what we found is there's a lot of fan favorites and right. those fan favorites shift. So like mm -hmm. even among our staff, we all like different characters in the show. Some of us are really fond of the Scotsman. Sure. Uh, a number of us really like Monkey Man. <laughs> um, you know, and so we didn't want uh, any anybody to feel like they couldn't choose their favorite. Right. Um, so th they have some similarities in, in how they play. They're they're effectively uh, all equal. Sure. Um, and what we knew was if Jack was a playable character, mm -hmm. everyone's going to want to play Jack. So we yeah. thought this was a, a good balance rate of like. <laughs> Everyone gets to play one of these really right. cool allies. And everybody gets to help Jack. Yeah. And of course we also have some or fans in the office. Or watch him go into craziness. <laughs> and we have some fans in the office whose favorite character is Zaku, so yeah. we wanted to make sure he had a, a presence a role. in the game. And, yeah, for sure. And a cool 3D and, figure. And I mean, he's the tallest figure on there, which was very smart, and that he does have kind of a menacing presence as he's moving along the board with you. Um, how many uh, tiles come with the game? Uh, there's 15 tiles, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, all of the minis are out here on the table, so there's uh, seven of those, including Jack and Aku. Uh, five for the players and then the two non-player ones. So, yeah. Wow. So I think we need to move along. Yes, we do. We've got a lot of stuff. A lot of goodies for us to check out today. So I'm gonna do the the quick thing and, and put this all in here. You and mean are, make uh, the next person angry about how you put away this game? <laughs> oh, is, is that a thing? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, is that just me? I wonder. People in the chat room, have you ever felt this feeling where you're at like a board game library or a board game store or like. I don't know, maybe your little sister borrowed your board game, and then when you open it up to play with your friends, it's a mess. No, that's just me? Oh, I I've been there. Okay. I, I, I used to get flack for putting everything back in its individual bag the way it came No, in. that's great. You're, you're a good game friend. <laughs> of course, for demos like this, we always have our exceptions of like a, a quick pack up. This yeah. has a very nice back tray insert that this will all go into later, um, but for now. Well, this one seems pretty, um, like, everything has a different shape and size, so it's not like you're going through 300 cards that are the same shape, but you have to sort them by color or something. Yeah, I was at a, a friend's house recently, and he got out a game we were going to play, and it's a, a large card-based game full of cards, and it had tipped on its edge no. when he moved, and the cards were just... So we, we put that game away and played something else. <laughs> so what do we have next? Um, we're going to kind of bounce all over the place. So we're going to shift gears to uh, one of our new party games. Uh, Blank Slate. Yeah, so Blank Slate is a really easy to learn party game. Um, and both Samurai Jack and this uh, game are for sale in our okay. booth, 137, and available other places as well. Amazing. Uh, some of the other I'm glad are... you're showing us stuff that's out now because people have brought these things and they're like, you just got to wait for a couple of months. And I'm like, why did you do that to me? I got all excited. So the bad news is we're going to go there too in oh, a minute. Okay. Um, all right, but... but at least you have some things to occupy our time while we wait for the other stuff. Yes. 
So Blank Slate is this, uh, as I said, it's an easy to learn party game. Mm -hmm. uh, plays with groups really well. We've got enough contents for three to eight players. Okay. Um, oh, we can't play it because we don't have a person, right? We, we can we can add some, okay. some mystery people in here, but um, I'll show you how it how works. How about you be two people? I can be two people. <laughs> Let me get another one of these whiteboards. I'll give us each a marker. Um, so this is uh, three to eight players, 20 to 35 minutes, and ages eight plus. Yes. And so the way this works, um, I have a quick question. Sure. The age thing, is that just a suggestion or is there also like a rating system like movies have to go through? Um, so a lot of it can come down to uh, component testing mm -hmm. for sizes and things like that. Um, to get certain lower age grading, you have right. to go through... Bigger pieces so they don't eat them. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so, so sometimes it's based on that. Um, sometimes we just try to estimate, um, you know, Ability-wise, yeah. if there's a lot of text-heavy stuff, mm -hmm. obviously for like real little kids, it's going to be hard if they can't sure. uh, quite read it at that level yet. Um, in this case, it's this is one of those games. It's family-friendly content, depending on how you play. Mm -hmm. um, so what's going to happen each round is I think somebody needs a quick uh, mic adjustment. Oh, oh you want to play? Yeah, come, come. Oh my gosh, yes, come here. We actually have a real third person now. All right, this this will work real well. So we'll we'll show how this works for real. Um, and this is one of those games too. Good. Where like, so you won't be like reading your mind and psychoanalyzing your strategy. The the more folks you have in this, uh, the better sometimes. And so uh, well, yeah, I want to see the safe person. That sounds it. like a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and our demos in the booth right now. It's it's such an easy game to walk up and learn mm -hmm. in a minute that it's easy to get a whole group of people around the table playing together. Uh, you got it? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I will, uh, I don't know, I'm worried. When you see a blank slate, I'm like, well, you could put anything. Well, hello. Yes, hello, welcome. Hey, okay. thanks for joining us. No problem. Now it's going to be a real fun time. <laughs> so this is, the way this works, it's a point-based game. Uh, we do have a score tracker on the board, which, okay. which I've not unpacked because I have so much to show. We're going to try okay. to keep it efficient. But uh, on your turn, you're going to draw one of these cards. Okay. And they're two-sided, so you can kind of keep track of the different content. And all of them have a word and then a blank, okay. right? So for example, sky blank. Okay. Um, so you're going to think of something that goes in that blank, a word that, that can finish that. Um, or for example, nose. Okay. Um, so I might think nose ring. Sure. Uh, I also thought that. Yeah. That's why the motto is the game where minds think alike. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, if somebody came up with something totally different, um, you know, that can be good too. Okay. Because um, what you're trying to do in this game is match exactly one other person at the table. Oh, so you want to go for the more obvious. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's try this one. We'll do egg. Uh, so the word is egg blank, and we're each going to write something down that comes to mind for the other half of that. All right. And is there a little timer component to this? Um, you, you can keep time if you want. Uh, typically, people are pretty fast, and if in an eight-player game, we see sometimes in the office, like if somebody's really dragging their feet, it's they'll end up just writing any crazy sure. thing down. Um, so if we're, we all agree that we uh, have written a word, okay, um, go reveal. Ahead and, yep. I put egg timer. Okay. Put egg white. And I put egg white as well. Ah. So we each matched. So okay. and we didn't match any other people. Right. So we would score three points apiece. Okay. And then because you didn't match anyone, mm -hmm. you don't score any points. Mm. If, okay. if we had a larger me. group, yeah. and let's say there was a third person who right. wrote egg whites, we would only score one point apiece oh. because too many people said it. So a lot of the trick here is so like... Unique, but maybe like not too unique. Exactly. And, and common, so, but not too common. Okay. And sometimes it's fun to see people overthink it, and they're like, well, everyone's <laughs> going to write this, so I'll write this other thing. <laughs> but then half the table yeah. had the same thought, and it's like, oh, six people said the same thing. That sounds like it would be a blast. And certainly, you know, depending on who's playing, some of these things, like when you have the card blank bed, okay. can go different directions depending on how people think, more or less adult, um, things like that. So Okay, I want to go through a few of these. This, yeah. is, this sounds fun. Uh, I'll go with this. You guys ready? Yep. Yeah. I have double bed. I have bunk bed. And I put water bed. So none of us match, so none of us score points. I almost put bunk bed. I thought of that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Should we see what's on the back of this one? Fine blank. <laughs> um, 
And it has to be another word? Yes. Okay. Man, I don't know what to put on this. <laughs> I'm stumped. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Ready? I have fine dining. Fine dining. I put lady. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what's fine? <laughs> so again, we would each score three points, and if we had the tracker out, we'd move up. And there's a, a fixed length to the tracker, which we can kind of show in the back mm. of the box here. Um, so we've got a score thing that shows each oh, player's cool. color. And once one player reaches the end of the track, they okay. won the game. Uh, you can see some different examples, like this is a good one on the back. Blank house, even brick house, dog house, haunted house, playhouse, and of course, full, full house. house. Yeah. Nice. And it, you know, it's a great game if you're playing with friends that you know well. Yeah, because there's these inside jokes. Yeah. And I, I recently learned this cool term, it's a Japanese term, it's yomi. yomi. And it, it means like when you're trying to get in someone else's head to think like they think, uh -huh. which we do so much in playing mm -hmm. games. And yeah. this is one of those games where you're like, okay, if, if I know this particular friend is playing, they're like, what's the, the most inappropriate thing I could write on this card? Because that's the way they're going <laughs> to yeah. think, right? Or, or if I'm playing like with my mom, it's going to go a different direction. Sure. Right. So that kind of a thing. Or so. like your kids or your niece or nephew. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. if they like a certain cartoon or something, you're like, oh, this is definitely what they're thinking. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, so less than that, five minutes to learn. That and, sounds like a riot. That yeah. is very fun. Yeah, that sounds great. And it comes with eight of these uh, dry erase boards right. and the markers for playing up to eight players. And of course, you know, if you really want to like push the, the limit. I like the design. It's got a little border here. Yeah, we've got some yeah. kind of like chalkboard mm -hmm. slate kind of look to it. And, yeah. All right. Very well, nice. Well, it sounds like you want to move on to the next game. Yeah, I just, I, the, the next the other two ones are like take super a little longer. Too. Okay. Um, well, while you're here on camera, I'll put you on the spot. How are we doing on time? Uh, we should be doing pretty good. What yeah, time is it? Yeah, we're doing really good. It is 3 26. Okay. okay, we have about a half hour left. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We're going to need it because we got two cool okay. games I really want to show. And uh, while I'm getting some of this stuff out, I'm going to plug that, uh, as I said before, booth 137. You can come demo and play all these games for folks here at Gen Con. Yes. For folks who are here also um, tomorrow at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a panel for one of the games I'm about to show oh, at the cool. end of this uh, about how that game is made. And that's going to oh, be nice. over in Lucas Oil Stadium, room nice. 3 at 10. So I'll, okay. I'll plug that again in a, in a bit. Um, and of course, following us on social media, USAopoly and Project Raygun, yeah. uh, we're posting all the different things we're doing, uh, including if you play test games in our booth, you can enter to win a bunch of these games. Oh, cool. Yeah. I like that. So this next one is, is one of our favorite licenses to work with. Uh, this one comes uh, from a dun, partnership dun, dun, with the Harry Potter team. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I, that gets stuck in my head all day when we're working on Harry it's Potter. It's so catchy. Yeah. And this is Fantastic Beast Perilous Pursuit. Mm -hmm. And this is not out yet, which <gasps> makes me sad, which is why you see this is empty, um, because the only copies we have are in the booth being demoed and played by a whole bunch of people here at Gen Con. So you, you can please steal my empty box. Um, but this, this is a game that we had super fun developing. Um, if uh, any fans are familiar with our Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle mm -hmm. series, it's a cooperative deck building okay. series. Um, and really with, with the Harry Potter licensing, Cooperative play really mm -hmm. just lends itself to everyone working together right. um, for a purpose. And so uh, in the deck builder, players are working together in the Harry Potter storyline right. to um, ultimately battle some of the villains and the Death Eaters and defeat Voldemort. Mm -hmm. uh, over here in the Fantastic Beast storyline, uh, this game is uh, largely based on the first movie, right. um, which is The Perilous Pursuit, a magical game of chase and chance. So uh -huh. players are cooperatively working to capture all of Newt's beasts who's, right. who've escaped around New York City yes. from his uh, suitcase. Um, and so what we have is a dice game, and players are rolling dice and re-rolling and assigning mm -hmm. those dice to their individual player board. So we've got the four key characters. Do you have the materials? I, I sadly don't, because okay. uh, the game is being played in the booth, and, oh, and since okay. this is a pre-production sample, well, yeah. I guess I won't steal it anyways. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wanted to steal it away from uh, from the people playing, but they looked like they were having way too much fun. Well, so. yeah, that's good. So I'll do my best to explain using the back of the box. And the way this works, we've got um, six custom dice that come with different iconography relative to the game. Mm -hmm. Each player has a player board. And so you can see Newt's player board is here. And he's got different pieces of his player board and pieces he can basically fill into those mm -hmm. double layer player boards. Each space represents a different ability 
that Newt can gain. And, and we call this... What the, kind of abilities? So, uh, it's a magical world. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we've got the beast card, right? Okay. So this is the, the creature we're trying to capture. Mm -hmm. um, and the creature will eventually try to escape and get away from us. It may uh, inadvertently do some damage to us as it tries to escape, so we have to maintain our, our shields yeah, and things like that. Yeah, just like in the movie. Yeah, so we've, we've got a shield ability. We've got two capture abilities, so one that lets us move his capture space, mm -hmm. piece, uh, one space closer to the suitcase, and another ability that lets us move it three spaces, but it's harder to get that ability activated. Uh, we also have an ability that lets us save some dice away so the creature can't okay. roll them as it tries to escape, and the last ability lets us draw these power-up cards that let us take extra actions and that we can share with our teammates on their turns as well. So, uh, you said it's a cooperative game. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for all of us to lose then? Yes, if too many beasts escape right. and get loose in the city, we all lose. Ugh. So we have to capture a certain number of beasts, get them back in a new suitcase, mm -hmm. uh, and as they run out, things get harder. Or, if any one of us uh, basically is knocked out yeah. while trying to save, uh, or recapture the beast, uh, the creatures, and that player is eliminated and all players lose. Oh, no. Uh, so yeah. you got to protect each other, too. Absolutely, yeah. and that's what's nice about this game is although you're the one rolling the dice on your mm -hmm. turn, you can use those dice to help all of your yeah, teammates. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a lot of discussion that happens mm -hmm. um, about which dice to save, which dice sure. to re-roll, and each player gets three dice rolls on their turn, so there's a lot of figuring out uh, how to do that. And when does this come out again? Soon. Soon. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the exact date. I know um, this is a pre-production sample, so Hopefully we're... Hopefully before the holiday season? Oh, yes, okay, yes, good. definitely. Uh, this is due out this year. I know we were targeted to try to have it here at the show. Mm -hmm. It just didn't quite get there. Um, well, that sounds really exciting. I love the idea of this cooperative game where maybe we could all lose. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and there's always this, like sort of the first round as, as you're going after the first creature because they get more and more difficult. It right. feels like, okay, we got this. And then the second creature shows up and things start to go really yeah. awry. And, and by the end, it's it's always right down to the wire with this cool. game, um, which is a lot of fun. And, and so very briefly, too, the way this works is you've got a ready, set, go mechanic okay. that we use. And so if I want to use new shield ability, you see there's two, two shields and then a single shield. So yeah. to ready his defense ability, mm -hmm. I need two dice with that symbol. Once I have that pair, I can assign them there, and there's a little piece that'll fill it in. And some of the in. other players um, need more. Yeah, so each each character is uh, honed to their ability. So uh, Queenie is known for her insight, mm -hmm. um, because she can kind of see the future. Right. So it's much easier for her to draw insight cards. Okay. Um, whereas uh, Jacob doesn't actually have any magic, <laughs> so for him to use insight is very, very difficult. Okay. Um, but he's pretty good at... Um, distracting the creature, which is the one that takes away dice, because yeah. he's the one who's always in that goofy leather armor, yeah. like, yeah, so he, he can do that much more easily than some of the other characters. Um, so once you fill the bottom with however many symbols you need, you put your piece in it, as you can see. Newt's got a few of his abilities filled in. Then the top piece is a single die. Okay. So when you get a single die, you can fill the top. So that's the set. So you've got ready, set, uh, and once your action is set, anytime in the future that you roll that symbol, okay. you can use that ability. And if I have this action set, if any of my teammates, so you see Queenie also has sure. that action ready, mm -hmm. if I roll extras of those symbols, I can give those dice oh, to her on okay. my turn, and we can do that action and twice. Vice, oh, and vice versa. Yeah. All right, nice. And then, of course, you want to build up your shields, because shields, when the creature attacks, you can spend shields rather than losing your hit points on the side of your player board. And this has really nice double layer player boards. The dice are custom engraved dice with these beautiful gold symbols mm -hmm. on them. Uh, really elegant art that kind of matches this the, box The Harry style. Potter world. And, yeah, and, yeah, and the dice are normally right there in the, cool. in the box. So yeah, this is one where we're really excited to get out to fans. People so are having a lot of fun. So if you're at Gen Con, make sure you go to their booth to see this, because he couldn't even bring it here. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have you have more games to show us, right? Yeah, so the, the last one is um, a, a big project that um, I actually got to work on, so I'm pretty cool. excited about it. And this is a prototype as well, yeah. uh, and so I don't have the whole thing here because there's only one of them, um, and it's being played right now downstairs. This is Court of the Dead Mourner's Call, mm -hmm. and this is a big box mm -hmm. miniatures game, and I did snag a few of the prototype miniatures, which are hiding in this box. Um, Hope, hopefully the players don't need them downstairs. Oh. But. So these, oh wow, they're so highly detailed. 
I'm gonna put them out here so the camera can see them. We have some creatures that look very scary. Maybe people too. Yeah, so the Court of the Dead, uh, this is a Project Raygun game, and it's done in conjunction with Sideshow Collectibles. So if you've ever seen those super premium, like Marvel and Star yeah. Wars collectible mm -hmm. figures, um, they're the company that produces those, and they're known for really um, premium art, premium sculpting. They created this new universe called the Court of the Dead. Okay. And, and tell me about this Court of the Dead. Yeah, so this is... Because it looks pretty metal. <laughs> it, it definitely is. It definitely has that kind of uh, tone to it. Yeah. Um, and its creator, Tom Gilliland, is here at the show. Oh, cool. Um, and that's the panel I mentioned earlier. Tom and I and some of our other team members this. are going to talk about this world. Tomorrow and, morning at 10 in Lucas Oil Stadium. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I remembered. So we're going to be sharing all about how this game came to be, but I'll give you the brief kind sure. of rundown. Um, in this world of Court of the Dead, um, heaven and hell are kind of equally corrupt, and they okay. are locked into this war with each other and it's become all they care about. Mm -hmm. In order to fuel their war, they use uh, mortal soul energy called Etheria. Oh, wow. Yeah. Talk about corruption. So death was created in the underworld as a way to harvest soul energy from our realm to give to them for their war. <sighs> Death decides that this is not the most noble purpose. Okay. And so, in secret, in the underworld, mm -hmm. he starts to siphon off some of that soul energy to keep. Whoa. And he starts building up his own forces in the underworld to eventually overthrow heaven and hell. Okay. So, as a. So, like, he's kind of good. Yeah, death is actually yeah. the, the hero in this storyline, yeah, exactly. which is a different take on it. And you see him back here. He's, he's known as the All Taker as well in the story. And he's okay. back here with his yeah. scythe. And, um,. As a player, you've recently died. Yeah. So welcome to the underworld. Okay. Um, one of the first things you do when you join the underworld is align yourself to a faction. And there's three factions, okay. bone, flesh, and spirit. Okay. So the bone faction is very rigid. They mm -hmm. have their view of how best to unite the underworld and bring this whole thing together, and they okay. think everybody needs to get in line. Mm -hmm. Flesh is much more flexible. Mm -hmm. They're adaptable. They're about change. And really, in the game and in the story, the spirit faction is, is the helping faction. They're about kind of bringing people together by doing what's right for all sure. of us. Mm -hmm. So once you are in this underworld and you're part of a faction, you're going to realize you kind of have your own vision of how you're going to bring okay. the underworld together. And those are hidden objective cards that each player gets. Okay. So right from the beginning, you have sort of an allegiance. Okay. You'll get a starting character Wait. that you get to use. So you went into the underworld. Yes. You haven't necessarily gone to heaven or hell. No, you're you're in in the underworld, which is death's realm between our okay. realm and heaven and hell. So you're in, in transition, yes. And you've aligned yourself with the, one of the factions. So I'm yes. guessing you have one of each right here. I, I don't actually. I okay. didn't grab a flesh faction. That's mm -hmm. probably because I'm bone faction. So I, I grabbed <laughs> one of those figures. Mm -hmm. um, this prototype box is kind of beat up, which you can okay. see, uh, and it also shows uh, this was a Kickstarter game oh, uh, cool. that we ran in April into May. And you can late pledge it until Monday. Okay. So we are down what to the wire. What was that campaign like? Um, it was interesting. This was our first Kickstarter. Okay. And so, you know, we have a company that's been in business for well over 20 yeah. years producing games. Um, but in order to bring this game to life with all of the components mm -hmm. in it and the premium kind of finishes we wanted, we felt we really needed to integrate the backers and, and figure out what they wanted mm -hmm. and, and how best to bring this experience to the table. Um, and so for the... The length of the campaign, it felt like it was just constant, right? Like comments and, and excited backers yeah. and people with questions and wanting to see more and the stretch goals were getting really exciting because one of the things you'll see is it says four player boards. Well, this is now a two to five player game. Oh, cool. Wow. So we were able to add Expand. more miniatures. Mm -hmm. This 50 figures went up to 70 total figures wow. in the box. Um, double layer player boards, lots of metal coins, oh, metal tokens. Oh. Um, so checking out that Kickstarter page, you can see all of the stuff that's going to come, custom dice, um, and of course all these great figures that were uh, digitally sculpted. And then uh, these are 3D prints, but obviously the um, final piece is They look is great for 3D prints, very high resolution. Yeah, so this is, this is our uh, Dredgebane Order mm -hmm. figure. He's one of the six guilds of the Underworld. So you're, you're recruiting from the guilds, you're recruiting these Mourner cards, which have special abilities to okay. build an engine. Um, and then you're using the key characters on these these really large like tarot sized okay. court cards um, to enact different actions to increase your influence mm -hmm. over the three guilds of the or the three factions of the underworld to increase your power with each of the six guilds okay. and to control locations on the board. So it's it's very much like a 
a lot of people have compared it to like a Blood Rage or a Rising Sun okay. style game uh, with some area control. And area influence. control, resource collecting. Yeah, and so you're doing all of this, uh, and you collect these metal unity tokens. Mm -hmm. Every time you do something for the greater good, okay. you're going to get a unity token. Okay. And there's this great tension in this game that I'm, I'm really excited about, and that Tom Gilliland, the, the story creator, was able to help us bring into the mechanics yeah. where you're trying to do your own vision to score the most points for yourself right. of this is how we unite, but the game forces you to sometimes do things that are good for everybody okay. because you have to keep everybody together mm -hmm. uh, in the underworld in order to ultimately defeat heaven and hell. And so you have two tracks on the board, and the higher those tracks go, the mm -hmm. more difficult everything becomes for everybody. So sometimes you have to choose actions to push the tracks back down to help yourself, but to help everyone else as well. Um, and of course, you know, you have this, these great figures here that are deployed around the board, and you have these monsters that come into play as well that have to be dealt with. So there's always this constant struggle between, I could get points this way, but I could help us over here, yeah. but, but I think I'm still gonna do the selfish right. thing. Right, and, so and then you have your secret objectives as well. Yeah, and so at the end, you're gonna get a point for every unity token. Mm -hmm. So every time you did something good, you're gonna earn points, which is also good for you, sure. but might give some opportunities to the players after you right. at the table. Um, and you're going to want to increase your influence over the factions. That's also going to score you points, but sometimes you have to spend your influence and cash in like, well, I'm going to try to take over this location that's part of the flesh faction. In order to move there, I'm going to have to spend some of my influence. So it's, it's that ebb and flow between, do I do the, the power move or do I do the more selfless thing to right. save some of those points aside? So this sounds like a really cool IP and world. Um, did it start with this game, or was it a book or something before? Yeah, so the IP existed before. Uh, this was something Sideshow had created and wanted to find new ways to bring it to right. fans. And so uh, prior to this, there's uh, a, uh, the Chronicle of the Underworld, yeah. which is... Uh, so you had to read all this and do the research? Yeah, so it's, it's this great hardbound book that's basically the encyclopedia of this world, <laughs> uh, full of this fantastic art, character stories, uh, there's a series of graphic novels that introduce you to some of the key wow. characters you'll find okay. in the court deck. Uh, you can pre-order the next graphic novel that's okay. coming soon. And then there's a whole bunch more exciting content that I can't talk too much about okay. uh, coming down the line. Um, but Tom Gilliland, who I said who created this right. universe, is a gamer. Oh, and cool. so It sounds like it. Yeah, so he felt like, okay, if we can create an interactive mm -hmm. experience that puts people into this world and helps right. them understand the story, that's going to get them to the next level. So we were partnered up... Um, you know, Sideshow Collectibles and Project Raygun to see if we could make that happen. Oh, cool. And it's been such an awesome experience, like, to sit down with Tom throughout the process and the rest yeah, of his team. Yeah, it sounds, team. like, really cool. And each version of the game we got to play, yeah. and he would say, okay, this doesn't quite feel true to the story, yeah. or, Ooh. Or the mechanic, uh, there was ludonarrative dissonance, as yes, they call it, yes, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and, and there were also some cool times where he was like, oh, we need this mechanic. This works well for the game. You haven't met this character yet and oh. what you've read, but here's a character you don't know about oh, yet that we're going to cool. put into it. Yeah, cool. yeah, for sure. So you said 75 miniatures. How many of them are, are they all sculpted, just waiting to be manufactured? Or mm -hmm. like, oh. Yeah, everything okay. in the game is done. So and it's done. It's Good. done. Yeah. Support those games that are done. Thank you guys, guys. for having me on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, well, how much time do we have left? About 15 minutes. OK. Yeah, so, so the game is done. Uh, we have like a couple very minor uh, like icon tweaks to, to are, make. Are there any final stretch goals that you really, really want to happen? So the, the campaign is closed. Okay. So we've hit all of our stretch goals okay. and then some. So that was really exciting to see. Um, to the point that this box is now too small for this game. Oh, uh, wow. So with all of the miniatures that have to fit in our custom back trays and this giant, this board is actually 36 by 24. Yeah. Beautiful piece of artwork mm -hmm. that fills your table. Um, so to get all that into the box, we had to go. 36 by 24, so it's three by two feet. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and this was an original art piece that was done to create the map mm -hmm. based on kind of the outline we needed. Um, and you'll see like the front of this box is an, uh, an Alex Horley original oil painting. Yes. Uh, oil and acrylic. Like I was saying, this right. looks so metal. <laughs> and when you back the campaign, you get to choose your favorite faction. Oh, cool. And you cool. get a custom box sleeve that goes mm -hmm. over and adds a second original piece of art relative to the characters of your favorite faction. Yeah. And there's actually a great quiz you can do online on the Crew oh, of website. Oh, cool. Yeah, like no. I'm bone or flesh, yeah. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm a, a more analytical-minded mm -hmm. person, so bone is, is sort of where I ended up 
Um, and so, you know, I can pick the bone sleeve that'll go sure. over this oh, box. Oh, that's so neat. And it highlights some of the key bone faction characters. Um, and when you do the quiz, you also get like a welcome to your faction kit that they mail you. Yeah. Oh, that's so, yeah. like you got recruited. Yeah. Oh, so it that's comes so with like a, a pin and some other mm -hmm. cool stuff that you can get. Um, and it also sends you a discount code that you can oh, use cool. to buy the books and the other uh, Court of the Dead merchandise, which oh, is nice. pretty exciting. Um, so yeah. So all of this is is well on its way into production. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, you have until Monday to back okay. this game. Um, and it will ship hopefully on schedule in early December. Things are looking really good for December. So we oh, expect cool. folks to have this by Christmas. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you have until tomorrow to go see, you have more of the miniatures and stuff. Yeah, so the whole game is out booth. and playable. Oh, uh, wow. And All 75 miniatures. The, the whole, everything. Well, thank you for bringing yeah. three of them here. Yeah, the, the problem is we have one set because these are all 3D printed yeah. and hand painted. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't steal too many because they're, sure. they're using the rest in a game right now. Um, but we're doing 90 minute demos so people can wow. play the game mm -hmm. and really experience yeah, it. Yeah, I saw uh, 90 plus minutes. So it's like, it's a real, this is like, you sit down and this is your evening kind of game. Yeah, and, and so one of the things we wanted to be attentive to is mm -hmm. that game length. Uh, so even in a five player game, 90 right. minutes is, is usually all it's gonna take. Okay. We say 90 plus because if it's your first time playing, you have right. to kind of learn Read some of the, the so. cards and how they work. Um, but we've seen that once people learn it, it snaps right along. And, and we wanted to hit that that lower time frame spot sure. because a lot of the games in this space right. can be three to four hour mm -hmm. epics for folks. And so we're like, how do we cram all that strategy and experience into okay. a slightly shorter timeline? And so far, we feel like the, the response, uh, both here at the show and right. previously, is, has been right in line with that, really positive. Mm -hmm. um, demos are filling up very fast, yes. um, so we are full for today, okay. for Saturday. Uh, for folks that want to try this tomorrow, uh, make sure you come to booth 137 really early tomorrow and okay. sign up for you and your friends to Maybe come Maybe after your talk at 10 a.m. at Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah, fortunately, I'm really lucky. My brother's here at the show and has learned the game inside and out, so cool. he's going to run a demo so I can go do the, the panel mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh, but please come to the panel if you're interested. You can ask all your questions about cool. this game, how it plays, and how it was made. Yeah, that sounds uh, incredible. So, wow. Um, you guys have brought so many games mm -hmm. just now. We went through four of them. Are there more at your booth, too? There are so oh, many more. Oh, my gosh. Uh, a couple of things I'll highlight. Sure. Um, we have uh, an early uh, prototype uh, version of Harry Potter code names. Oh, cool! So for code names fans, you can go check out I the Harry love Potter version. Code names. Yeah. yeah. So the the Harry Potter version is like our Disney and Marvel versions, mm -hmm. full of of uh, picture and yeah. word cards, um, and it's based on the duet rules. So mm -hmm. it's two player. Uh, of course, if you're familiar with code names, you can quickly adapt those cards to play the yes. traditional original rules as well. Um, we also have our Thanos Rising game based on the Infinity mm -hmm. War movie cooperative uh, dice rolling game. Wait, you told me some interesting stuff about this. What is yeah. it like to work with a major IP like Marvel in conjunction with a movie release? Yeah, so, you know, sometimes people are, are really skeptical of mm. these uh, IP-based games right. because... Oh, they're just trying to ride that train, yeah. make that money. Mm -hmm. And really a goal of ours is to shift that pers perspective um, and do really quality, hobby-style okay. licensed games. So we have the Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle of the Deck mm -hmm. Builder, um, we've got the Samurai Jack game, sure. we've got the Perilous Pursuit game, and the Thanos Rising mm -hmm. game. Um, in order to make those games so that they come out in conjunction with the movie, right. we get a script download way before the movie. Wow. So, so are they changing things in the movie as you're trying to catch up with making the board game? Uh, not that we ever really know of. Mm -hmm. um, typically what happens is sometimes we ask a question like, yeah. can we use this character? And, and they're like, oh, we just cut them. Or, or, or the response will be, not now. And, and so you, sometimes you get these vague, yeah. okay, so, um, so if you come to our booth, you can also get the promo cards for mm -hmm. that game. So for example. Um, so you, you guys even get to know maybe like the casting before Sometimes, because yeah. what we'll get is... Because um, you need to put their faces in We'll the get game. the style guide. Um, for some things, they'll, they'll give us like uh, an FPO for placement only yeah. image. So it's like, there will be a person here. We right. just don't know who right. yet. It's the stub little art asset. Yeah. yeah. And, and so a great example, uh, we have a promo card here. Uh, if, if any of you have not seen the movie, spoiler alert. <laughs> Okay, so um, Itri, who yeah. is the uh, dwarf who uh -huh. who uh, helps Thor in the movie, sure. 
we couldn't know about him prior to the movie. Right. So we knew Peter Dinklage was in the movie because right. people knew that, but yeah. we didn't but know. Yeah, but you didn't know what he was going to do and to what extent. Or what uh, he would look like. Yeah. So it, when you buy the game, he's not in there. Oh. But the promo card, now that the movie's out, we were oh, able to create promo to cards. And to put him back in. Yeah, yeah okay. and so there's there's some things like that. that There's a, a the Q ship, the big mm -hmm. uh, Thanos' right. round ship there, adds in as a new villain you can okay. fight against. And so... These extra promo cards are available here. Cool. Uh, we should have them at PAX Unplugged and a oh, few other nice. shows. So um, we've had like people rushing up to our booth yes, to get those. Yes, it sounds like there is an urgency to get to your booth at Gen Con. Yes, and if you want Thanos Rising here at the show, it may be sold out already. Oh, wow. Um, we were running really low at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, I mean, this is the Saturday, so this is the big, the big day for you guys. Uh, what has your Gen Con been like? Um, so it's been a progression right over okay. the years. Um, I started coming, of course, as a fan, as we all do, and as I got into game okay, design. Okay, how many Gen Cons have you done? This is six for me. Okay. Uh, my older brother, I think, said this is 15 for him. Wow. So he's been, been coming a little bit longer mm -hmm. than me. Uh, he, he came to the first Indianapolis mm -hmm. Con, so that, that was a pretty cool thing. Um, and, you know, I started following him as, as a gamer, and sure. we would go play games, mm -hmm. and, and we started designing games, and, and now I work for USA Athlete Project Reagan, so we have a booth. And I'm there teaching people to play a game I designed, That's awesome. which is super exciting. Yeah. Getting to meet people. And is do that these the most rewarding streams. part for you? Um, yeah, I would say it is. Although, um, you know, it's always like kind of tense because like a lot of love and energy went into yeah. this game, and and to put that in front of people mm -hmm. and get the feedback, it's been so positive. Mm -hmm. So it's been really, really exciting. Yeah. But there's always that fear that like somebody's gonna come along and be like, I didn't enjoy it, which which is fine. This game isn't for everybody, but. Uh, but are they like mean to your face? No, no one's okay. ever been mean to my face. Actually, people have been really excited. <laughs> sure. we've, we've had people take out their phones and late back the game at oh, the table. Oh, that's so Which is cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, and one of the last stretch goals, actually the last stretch goal we put in uh, was a special promo card. They were originally going to be mm -hmm. convention promos. We just threw them in in the Kickstarter. We created a card for myself, one for Tom Gilliland, oh, who cool. created the, and one for Eric Scoggin, who worked for um, Sideshow. So they have like our likenesses <laughs> in world. Oh, but are you like a bone person? Yeah, so like I'm, I'm this, this creepy kind of bone creature, mm -hmm. but he definitely looks a bit like me. And so um, when people play that card, I've seen, they look at it and they're like, is this you? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my promo card. And, and my card is really mean to other players. Oh. So that's, that's an interesting kind of dynamic okay. to see them use that and, um, and to have fun with kind of mm -hmm. the, those mechanics that we put on the cards. So. Um, so it's, it's just been really exciting to share the game and, and to and show have it to pins folks. now. I'm noticing too, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, sideshow yeah. is, is just amazing with their yeah. art. So I've got one of their Court of the Lanyards. Uh, we've got the Rise. Uh, so the, there's a series of, uh, and a logo for the World Rise Conquer Rule. Mm -hmm. So this is the Rise pin. This is the Underworld United. So this is all of the faction symbols stacked together. Yeah. And we were at uh, San Diego Comic Con yes. a week and a half ago. That's where um, USA Opoly is based, right? Yeah, in San Diego. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and Sideshow is based in, in Thousand Oaks, north of LA. Okay. They have a huge booth at Comic Con. We had the game on display sure. under glass, like this yeah. very beautiful display case they made. We we're showing it off there, and so they made an exclusive pin. Oh, uh, cool. This is Kier. She's one of the, the really popular characters. Nice. From the oh, I see. SECC. Yeah. So this this was the uh, exclusive pin this year, and you can see there's Kier on the front of the box. Um, so, so I was able to snag one of those while I was at the convention, um, and and people have been asking where they can get them. Unfortunately, you can't get this one, uh, but there are Rise pins uh, cool. out in circulation that you can get a handful on. So. I know you just survived your Kickstarter, yeah. or, and it's still like going, and you're in the middle of Gen Con, it's Saturday, but do you see maybe expansions or sequels to this project? So one of the things that's great is this IP is so that's rich what, exactly. yeah, that, that there's plenty of opportunity for that. Um, okay. We're just going to have to see kind of, of, of where the future takes mm -hmm. us. I know Tom is full of ideas for the story, and I've got lots of mechanic ideas. We'll just have to see how this game goes and what yeah. comes next. Yeah. Okay. Or <laughs> if 75 miniatures isn't enough. Right. Well, it's amazing on the Kickstarter. Yeah. We're like, can I get this character as a mm -hmm. miniature? It's like, there's... There's so many right already. because they're they're fan, they've been following the IP, reading the comic books, and the, they have the encyclopedia, et cetera. Yeah, so everybody has their favorite that knows the story. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you have the attention of the internet. Maybe remind them where can they follow USAopoly, find out more about 
ray gun, et cetera. Yeah, so we have separate social media for the two. So okay. you can find USAopoly and uh, Project Ray Gun both under those names on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay. Uh, we're going to be sharing a lot of information there. Uh, you can find us at booth 137 here at the convention. Uh, you can find uh, this demo there as well. The panel tomorrow, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Okay. Uh, Any Oil, other special events? Room three. Uh, we had our Harry. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, that's Lucas okay. Oil. Um, room three. Yeah, it's the, when you enter the stadium uh, through the kind of bridge there, mm -hmm. it's one of the first meeting rooms on the first floor. Um, and uh, we had our Harry Potter trivia last night because oh, cool. we have a trivial pursuit game. Oh, that's cool. Um, so. Uh, mostly come by the booth and demo stuff. You can see some of the other games I didn't get time to talk about as well. Lots of exciting things. Like uh, what? Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we have on display? We have our privacy party game uh, available in the booth. We have a lot of great puzzles from our different IPs. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to keep track of everything. We have our Marvel and Disney Codenames games available yeah. here at the show. A new Super Mario Kart game. Oh, cool. Yeah, so lots of fun stuff. Um, and of course, Mourner's Call, so the, the tagline of this game is mournerscall.com will take you to the Kickstarter page uh, where you can then link to the late pledge uh, oh, cool. before Monday. Yes, and so you can, you can still get some of those like, backer benefits. And... Yeah, anybody who comes in late, we did one pledge level for this okay. game. There's a retailer pledge, but for, for uh, the average uh, person who wanted to get their hands on this game, there's no add-ons, there's no right. extra fees. For $90, you get the whole thing with all cool. the premium components and everything. Um, so they can just go on and get all the Kickstarter. Do they get their pieces. little faction? Uh, yeah, so they get to version. choose. The, the Kickstarter exclusives are the, the metal coins, the custom sleeve art that yeah. goes over the box. They get to pick which faction they want in the pledge manager. Mm -hmm. Um, and they get all the, the premium stuff, the cool. five player version, the whole thing. All right, so, so it's yeah. not, it really isn't too late. It's still support the game till Monday and still get all the cool goodies, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, there was Mourner's Call, Blank Slate, Samurai Jack, Samurai Jack, and um, Fantastic Beast. Yes, so that was so awesome. Thank you so much for sitting down with us, Pat. My it was pleasure. It's so cool to find out about what a beautiful wide range of games that you guys have coming out. Make sure maybe to check out that panel tomorrow morning. Yes, please. Uh, 10 in the morning, Lucas Oil Stadium, room mm -hmm. three, I yep. remember. And uh, don't go away. We'll be back in about 30 minutes with our next interview.